Hey, what's going on, placebos? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be showcasing a legendary weapon that kind of floats under the radar. Whether you forgot it was massively buffed or used it afterwards but didn't use it properly, this gun has some serious damage potential for all Vault Hunters. It has a lot of similarities with the Hellwalker, and that's saying something. I'll be letting you know where you can get one, explain what it does, and what you should do to maximize its power. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one, or you could even follow me on Twitter, and let's crack into it. So the gun we are covering today is The Wave, developed by TK Baja himself. We're actually covering three weapons, the Tidal Wave, TK's Heat Wave, and TK's Shock Wave, but I thought the wave sounded cool. Like, you know, the Wave Gang, or the Wave Rave. They all have an increased chance to drop from Dump Truck, you fight around here in the droughts. After completing the quest, dump on Dump Truck, which you can get from Ali, who is an L11 out of 10. They're pretty much identical, coming in either shock, fire, or non-elemental, which is a good set of elements. The projectile count does differ between the elemental and kinetic variants, with the elemental waves coming with either 6, 8, 9, 10, or 12, and the tidal wave with either 12, 13, 16, 18, 21, or 25. And no, we're not playing bingo. When looking for the best variant, the more projectiles, the better, although somewhere near the top will do just fine and a dastardly prefix will have you maximizing your critical damage. They can also come with two mag variations holding either two or eight rounds. And if you want the true double barreled shotgun experience, you'll go for the two. These guns used to be among the worst in the game that was like most things before they were buffed. I'm still waiting for mine. Their damage was boosted by 233% while also getting a nice boost to projectile speed which really helped them out and now has their damage listed higher than the Hellwalkers, but the difficulty is in squeezing all of that out. They shoot a line of small orbs which break like waves through the air and will bounce off surfaces, giving their projectiles a longer lifespan than most, although the traditional Jacob's Ricochet effect has disappeared. The projectile cone is wide but it can be reduced by aiming, and you'll definitely want to be doing that. The key to maximizing your damage with a wave is in getting all those projectiles to land, which often means shoving the barrel up your enemy's nose so far you can tell whether they have COVID, or there's another little known stat that'll make this weapon an absolute force to be reckoned with. Yes, accuracy is king, I don't think I've ever said that, but it's true in this case. Improving your accuracy will massively boost your chances of landing each projectile on that critical spot, which can cause some absolute carnage. Increased accuracy is easily achieved on Zane thanks to Man of Focus. Just spamming that cannon will squeeze your crosshairs so tightly you'll barely be able to see them. On him you'll be firing off some tremendously powerful rounds, blowing holes in the faces of your enemies time after time. It wasn't until I rode the Zane train that I saw the true potential of this gun, and it's a blast. It's not like it's just Zane with Man of Focus either, you can improve your accuracy through passives on your class mod or artifact, grab a company man with the main accuracy roll, or even pick up a Jacob's accuracy passive on your class mod for the biggest single increase. On Amara with heavy rain to boost its projectile speed and a Jacob's accuracy boost to tighten the spread, these guns turn into snipers, allowing you to hit crits from the realm of Shrek in the kingdom of far far away. Its high projectile count paired with indiscriminate welcomes the Jacob's Ricochet effect back and really takes it up another level while mobbing. Of course Flak is going to be great with this gun and I didn't use any accuracy boosts on them, but it would have been better if I had. You don't need it though when you're just out to one shot some bosses and it could do that just fine. The high number of projectiles, especially of the Tidal Wave variant, helps extend the life of that small magazine massively and will have your action skill coming back faster than ever. You may not think this gun is good on Moe's and I have to say I was surprised at how good it was. Combining it with the Minesweeper class mod rewards your crits with a bang, which honestly killed me half the time. But when it didn't, it was wonderful to see. 
The damage is definitely there for her, there's no doubt about that. When thinking anointments for the waves, especially the 2 round version, Reload Stack is a great one for mobbing, where you'll grow stronger the more enemies you defeat. For bossing, next two mags, Fadeaway Active, Consecutive Hits or URAD are all good, and it depends on your build and what you want to do. Overall, the TK's Wave is a great shotgun for all characters. It has the potential to deal heavy damage, but without boost to accuracy, releasing that power can be difficult to do consistently. When you can pull it off, it feels great, comfortably able to handle the mobbing and bossing arenas. It's a shotgun that'll constantly knock enemies off their feet, which can be a little annoying when you're trying to land those criticals, but that just adds to the fun. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, learned about the waves, and how to maximize their damage. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.